Human Population Homo sapiens began in Africa about 200,000 years ago. Our population may have been as low as 100,000 based on genetic differences found in modern humans. Before our species, our ancestors, such as Homo habilis, Homo neanderthalensis, Homo ergaster, moved into Europe and Asia as well. Homo sapiens began immigrating out of Africa 100,000 to 125,000 years ago, and by 30,000 years ago had spread across most of the globe, but very low numbers as a species at one time before this spread. The majority of people filled a niche of hunting and gathering, living in tribal groups. Many of these groups began to practice agriculture as well, by gathering and growing locally found plants and animals. And if an area became exhausted, the village would move, so I call this bring the village to the food lifestyle. Around 10,000 years ago, the agricultural revolution occurred. This occurred in what is called the Fertile Crescent, an area between the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, and the Persian Gulf, along the Nile River, Euphrates, and Tigris rivers. It's often thought of as this quick occurrence, but I prefer really to call it the agricultural evolution, and it probably began 20 to, 20 to 30,000 years ago and culminated in a final shift of ecological identity about 8,000 B.C., changing to a bring the food to the village lifestyle. It is in the Fertile Crescent that this revolutionary practice really occurred and took hold. And instead of bringing the village the food, those in this region over time began to grow crops from local grains such as wheat, barley, and rye and cultivate them. They would choose and save seeds, water, and even selectively breed them, though they probably did this unwittingly. They also began to keep and raise and breed large beasts of burden, like oxen and horses, and they started to store food. And one ecological law that is always followed is that when you increase food, you increase the population. As the population rose, they then had to, the same choices all populations always have, emigrate, change niches, or die. They chose the former to emigrate and they began to spread. But this wasn't empty space. They spread into lands occupied by other people who were still bringing the village to the food. Those leaving the Fertile Crescent changed the rules. They brought agriculture with them. Spreading north and south was much a sl slower process because when you tried to take your crops and your animals into different biomes, they didn't survive as well, so this took much longer. So they mostly spread across the temperate region. And this is the band across the globe that is best for their kind of agriculture. They could bring their seeds with them and plant them and they would grow. They could bring their large animals for work and food as well and they would survive in this, in this habitat as well because it was very similar to where they had evolved. This was usually then at the detriment of those living in those regions. In the 1800s, with the Industrial Revolution, those practicing the Western lifestyle began to transport themselves and their way of life and their goods throughout the globe. You can still see that we have an affinity to coastal regions as this is still the predominant location of human populations. We can see on the map with the yellow representing what the earth looks like from, the, from space at nighttime and what is lit up. As we got better at using fossil fuels to grow and transport ourselves and our food and better at storing, our population began to expand exponentially. This really can be seen in the mid-20th century as we began the Green Revolution. This is not referring to environmentalism, but instead to the greening of the planet with crops by the using of fossil fuels to run machinery and petroleum-based pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. Crop, produc crop production exploded across the planet in acres and acres of monocultural farming. The human population continues to grow but has slowed somewhat. This is mostly due to efforts to educate and bring girls out of poverty. This reduces the number of children on average, but more importantly delays how soon they begin having children, and increasing the time between generations has a larger impact on population growth than anything else. From an ecological standpoint, we see examples after example 
that when a population exceeds its carrying capacity, with food being the only population control, they begin to experience a boom and bust population cycle. We see it in the bacteria in a petri dish and the moose on Isle Royale. A population will grow until it exhausts the ecosystem's ability to provide enough cal caloric energy for the population. Then most die due to starvation and disease. This allows the food source to recover and they start the whole cycle again. This is easy to see in isolated island populations since they can't emigrate away to get a better food source. Well, the earth is an island. There's only so much sunlight to convert the, into chemical energy for food. So far, despite starvation in some ecosystems as a whole, we have been able to produce enough caloric energy by converting ecosystems like grassland and forests into high yield food crop sources. Even if we could turn the entire planet into farmland, which of course would be so lacking in diversity that the ecosystem would not survive, there has to be a limit to the amount of calories that can be grown. The earth has a carrying capacity. Many would argue that were you to take into account the loss of biodiversity, we have already exceeded the Earth's true sustainable carrying capacity for humans. If so, will we suffer the same fate as the moose on Isle Royale, repeating cycles and cycles of boom and bust population growth? What happens when we exceed the Earth's carrying capacity?